What's going on guys? Reaper here and welcome to Reaper's Papa San Supply. So on this episode of Repairing the Past, I give an original Korean War M1951 slash M52 flak vest a little bit of new life with some repairs and one of our reproduction plate systems. Order one one six one. So as you guys can see, the vest is actually in pretty damn good shape for its age. So I talked to William, the owner and customer of the flak, a little while back on the phone just to kind of get a feel and an idea and discuss a few things about what we needed to do to go ahead and repair or mildly restore the flak. So the flak itself is going to go ahead and get one of our reproduction plate systems in it. However, the rest of it, since it's in such great shape, really doesn't need a whole lot of work other than, other than um, some stitch repairs where the old original stitching is worn out and starting to come out of the seams. And one original repair, which I'll show you guys here and discuss what we're going to do with that. So this is the original repair, and I'm pretty sure it's of the era um just looking at it and seeing what it's made of and how it was done I'm, I'm willing to bet it was done you know in the 50s or 60s now the one downside to this whole thing is that it has torn out right there along the uh, patch panel and stitching there so that was one thing i wanted to discuss with him see if he wanted to have this removed and had this whole thing repaired a whole different way but since it is an original military repair we're going to go ahead and leave this patch panel and i'm going to put a patch panel behind it and do basically a back and forth stitch and and just kind of put it back to stat almost like a field repair kind of uh well a lot like that right there so um that's cool man that's that's not a bad thing the other thing here is that you guys can see I wanted to show this off a little bit so this is this is essentially what happened to the vest I don't know looking at it if it was actually hit by shrapnel or if it just got damaged but it looks like it's got some burning here in the nylon and how it's kind of shredded I'd almost say shrapnel but you never know but looking in here if you guys look close you can see it has another panel under the outside panel that's at it, that's in nylon. So this this repair patch here is actually made out of herringbone, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, but like I said, we're going to leave this, and I'm just going to put a patch panel over this on the inside, and just do kind of a field repair stitch on it. Um, everything else, otherwise, as far as stitching and repairs, isn't a whole lot. Uh, there's a few things here, and like these seams on both sides especially down here needs to be restitched up um, <clears throat> other than that and putting the plate system in this thing man and just stitching it back together here and here um, it really doesn't need hardly any real work to it um, I did notice and I, I completely forgot about it at the time but it's missing one of the uh, uh, well essentially cinching buckles is what I what I call them uh, so what I'll do is I'll get either a piece of brass or steel probably brass so it doesn't rust and bend it just like these and replace one so he's still got both of them for um, the, uh, the waist belt here 
So, as you guys can see, not a whole bunch of work to it, but it is neat to show this stuff off, especially when I get something new that I get to work on and repair that I haven't been able to work on before in the past. And this is the first time I've ever had, essentially, a Korean War M1951 or M52 sent in for any type of work or repairs. So, I'm excited to get this done and show off to you guys how it comes out. All right, so like we talked about, uh, there was a rip here and some of the seams and stuff here and here were coming undone. And uh, so what I did, so I went ahead and did just basically like an in the field military style repair, which mimics a lot of other little bits and pieces that are already on the flak. Um, I wound up having to do this here because as I was doing this portion here, uh, this this area right here was pretty worn out and weak. So every time I was doing a back and forth stitch on this thing, it was just starting to try and pull this apart. So I went ahead and did a little bit here as well. That way I could kind of save the flak better and that way that once I put the plates in this thing, it's not just going to entirely fall apart especially in shipping or moving around or display or anything else so I went ahead and did some stitching here and then I went and did the whole stitch on this because this is upon closer examination um, you can see that every so many stitches were actually so worn out that this whole panel on this side was starting to come apart um, now I used a little bit of a lighter tan and stitch instead of a darker color like this because I think originally uh, some of this was a little lighter um, and just kind of got stained over time from use. Uh, so it won't be too big of a deal if the customer wants to go ahead and darken this. Uh, also, on this side, I went ahead and got everything that I needed unstitched so I could get in here and check everything else out. Uh, I went ahead and did a little bit of a stitch down through here, reinforced and fixed some of the stitching coming loose. Now for the most part on this flak, I don't want to do more than I have to. I want to keep as much of it intact and as original as possible without, you know, adding a whole bunch of stitches here and there and uh, kind of taking away from the flak and its original glory so to speak <laughs> uh, so anyway uh, since I've got this whole thing opened up we're gonna go ahead and get the plates installed in this thing get it stitched back up I'll go ahead and get that waist belt buckle finished up and put on here and this thing will pretty much be done and ready to go back to the customer but before I go ahead and add the plates to it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this thing out and I'm going to get tons and tons of photos of just about every detail on the flak. And then I'm going to take and get measurements of just about every single detail on the flak as well. Um, since I've never had one of these in my actual possession until this customer sent me this flak, this gives me the opportunity to get proper measurements and see how close my reproductions were or see if I need to change or fix or adjust anything for any of the patterns off of our M1951 and M52s that we've previously made or may make in the future so alright guys plates are officially installed in the flak whole front is all sewn back up this thing is pretty much done and ready to go back to the owner so I'm just gonna point out a few things real quick um, you'll note that you can actually see the plate system and the earlier M51 style flak vests. So here on the M52 and through all M55s, this inner fabric or inner shell actually extends all the way to the bottom and gets stitched up so you don't ever see the plates. However, with the M51, they didn't do that. They left the inner shell a little short and you can see how close it is to where they actually sew in so when they do it if you notice here actually fold these plates upright stitch it so then it hangs down and you have this little bit of extra fabric that just kind of sits there um, so that's how they did it with the m51s 
So anybody getting a plate system or replacing plates or just trying to fix an old M51 if you happen to have one, that's a little pointer there. It's a little information you may not have if you have one that does not have the plates in it. So just wanted to throw that out for you guys. Also, with this, because of how they stitch the inner and outer shell together, this gets a little difficult because when they originally did it, they stitched right along the original stitch line. Now, I don't know if they actually did the button snaps before they stitched or after. I'm going to say they did it before, or I'm going to say they actually put the button snaps in after, but that means you would have to get into the inside of the vest. And yeah, so I'm not entirely sure how they did that. But uh, when unstitching this to replace it, I had to come back in between and get as close as possible to these button snaps. Um, which I actually went back by hand in a few areas that I could not get the machine close enough to the buttons. So just to make sure that it doesn't come apart or unstitched or anything else, it's all fully sewn like it should be. Essentially the flak has been heavily used and kind of getting to that point where, well, you know, you got to kind of be careful with it. The thing's every bit of 70 something years old at this point. <laughs> Um, anyway, so the next order of business, which I actually did a test, is to replace the cinching buckle back here as it was missing one on the left hand side to um, hold your, your waist belt in essentially. Um, so without that you can't weave through and tighten your, your, your cinch belt. Um, so, I actually used a little bit thicker brass for this one and I'm gonna go ahead and change this out and use the proper gauge um, brass rod which I happen to have just gotten I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find it or get it in time before having to send this flak back to the customer so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna actually show you guys how I do these all right, so I got the sample here to simulate the back of the M1951. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to have this sample and show you guys how to make these cinching buckles. So, also, I've got my big working block here um, that I use all the time and pretty much take with me anytime I travel for events as I always have something to work on and fix. So something like this is really handy. But to uh, make these cinching buckles yourself, you can actually really easily do this yourself at home um, by getting yourself a chunk of wood and possibly a vise to put it in. But uh, like for example here, I used rods out of an old 307 engine, but you can easily go to pretty much any hardware store and purchase um, a stick of round stock or steel rod. Uh, and cut to length and drill your holes in your wood and set them pretty much whichever distance apart you need to. Now if you see I've got it kind of set in a triangle pattern. Uh, two, two to the rear and one in the middle and the front. So it sits kind of like a three prong actually. Um, that way what you can do is you can take your brass rod. You can do this with steel or just about any other rod that you may need to use and you can go up in size as well. Uh, I believe this is 332 rod which was the closest I could find at the time for uh, the M1951 stitching buckle. So when you set your rod in here you'll set your open end to the outside single rod um, and then weave it around to bend and you'll come all the way around so you kind of get that U pattern. Now, if you notice, you'll have this little hook kind of like that, um, which is fine. That's exactly what you want. Now, when you do your second part um, and run it around, you can just hook it to your twos, your two different rods here on the back, um, and it'll lock itself in place. You can kind of hold it now. This is important. You don't want to come all the way around because you're going to need to be able to weave it into your uh, your nylon here, your uh, your nylon webbing. So we'll go ahead and come around a little bit, 
and we kind of got a straight end there. So now you can kind of see it's starting to look a little bit like a cinching buckle. Um, so now what you need to do is go ahead and cut that end off. Uh, I use fencing pliers because they're heavy duty and for cutting thicker materials or uh, various gauge rod, these just work a lot better than wire cutters. So I'm going to cut it roughly where I think it's going to need to be you will have to trim it okay so now this is a stage that if you guys want to you can lacquer coat this or paint it or whatever um, but you'll slip it in there and there you kind of got your size you need there so this is what you got to do next since you're in there that was pretty easy to go in I could probably actually go ahead and bend that a little bit more just to make it um, a little easier on myself but you don't want to get too much of a bend especially if you're having to run two buckles for example you'll lose some of your space I left this a little bit more open just to more easily demonstrate this so once you kind of get it there your next step is okay so you're looking at it you're gonna need to trim your ends so this end and this end a little bit uh, you can measure it out or you can just eyeball it okay the next step guys so I've got this steel plate here that I use to actually put in between the uh, cinching buckle so when I go to actually knock it down you use a hammer just about anything and the same thing with the other side um, you want that edge to kind of be close to the side so as you knock it down you still keep that round shape and works it kind of into place so there you can see you basically have your cinching buckle um, you can still knock that down a little bit further after you take your plate or or whatever out you don't necessarily need a plate it just makes it a little easier To keep your round shape and uniformed so it's basically consistent um, and that's exactly how I made the cinching buckle to replace on this original in 1951 vest um, don't be afraid to make your own little backyard rigs to make certain things or just like this work block for example it was made literally out of just stuff I had laying around and uh, put some handles on it drilled some holes in it took some old rods from a an old V8 engine and use that to be able to create my cinching buckles. And this is a much easier and cheaper option on you than it is to send out an entire say flak vest or article of equipment just to have something like this replaced when you can basically and easily and cheaply do it yourself at home with tools that you might already have laying around. Anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this episode of Repairing the Past and I hope the information with, like, say, the cinching buckle was very informative and helpful to you guys. Um, I've got a lot of great and neat things coming up here in the future for these episodes or the series of Repairing the Past. Uh, so it's not going to all just be flak-related stuff. It just happened to go in line one right after the other. But uh, the couple other things I've got coming is a lot more unique and a lot cooler um, if there's certain things you guys would like to see possibly repaired or if you guys are kind of liking the pointers and just ideas of how to do this and that, let me know because I love the DIY stuff and I like to show you guys little things like that that can really just save you a lot of time and money. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the next one and as always, stay frosty, ride or die. Reaper.